I started playing drums when I was 10. Not the drum set, but just, you know, school band, that kind of thing, um, concert percussion. And the fir my first experience with the actual drum set was when I was 15 years old, and I was in the school band room watching an older kid play. And it was the first time I'd actually had an opportunity to be that close to a drum set where I actually was going to be able to play it because I decided that after this kid leaves, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to play myself. It was a great, a great moment in my life. I mean, it was just, you know, as you connect with something that's really powerful, yeah. you know, so it was the first time I actually sat down and I could play some of the things I was hearing him do. And I was, I was pretty, pretty shocked, you know, that I could do it, you know, but that was, that was a big, big moment the San Francisco Bay Area that was like ground zero for you know all of the you know social revolution and all this other stuff so it was really reflected in the way that people lived their lives it was reflected in the music especially you know and everything was in upheaval you know the, the whole music scene was very experimental it was Bill Graham you know with the Fillmore and all of that and Bill was I think the guy that really changed the way that people viewed pop music and just music in general because he would have you know in his venues it wouldn't be like there were three rock bands on a show you'd have a rock band you'd have like a funk band you'd have jazz you know and it was all together that was never done before you know the rock concert as we know it today evolved from what Bill Graham started you know, there in San Francisco. You know, at the time that I was coming up, just happened to be, you know, my particular age group, the most credible, you know, thing that you could do, you know, with your art was become a, a, a jazz musician, right? And so it was kind of on the cusp of that moving into the sort of the rock era. And, you know, you could start to be in rock bands and make money and all this other stuff. So I decided that I, I wanted to play funk music. When I went to see James Brown for the first time, it was like so deep, such an incredibly powerful experience. You know, I'd never seen anybody play like that. I'd never heard anything like that before. And immediately I started trying to do that. Then, you know, you hear uh, uh, Zigaboo with the meters and, you know, Bernard Purdy. And then there was Tony Williams and Elvin Jones, you know, Jay Canna with Woody Herman and Count Basie, you know, Sonny Payne. And the thing that I liked about all those players that I mentioned was that each one of them had their own sound, their own voice. And for better or for worse, that's what I wanted. I wanted to have my own voice. I didn't want to sound like anyone else. I didn't want to copy anybody. I wanted to have my own thing. So that was kind of an underlying principle in my music life was never copy. Believe it or not, I was drafted into the Army. And you know, during that period, if you were drafted, you were going to Vietnam. That's just the way it was. And But the, also the law was is that as long as you fulfilled your military service, you could go into any other service prior to your draft date. Mm -hmm. So you didn't have to go in the Army, but you had to go in the military, right? So I enlisted in the Air Force because I just didn't, I wasn't interested in going to Vietnam. And to me, to have another couple of years tacked on, uh, you know, being in the military so that possibly I would be able to live my life, you know, um, was worth it. And then when I was in basic training, somebody came around and said, "Is anybody? We got any musicians in here?" I raised my hand. I said, "Okay, go over here and audition for the band." Okay, so I did it, and it wasn't. I didn't think I was, you know, particularly good at the audition. I did what I, you know, what they asked, and not very well because I couldn't really play that well at that time. And uh, so basic training was finished, and I get my orders to my first duty station and it says Air Force Band. I have friends, you know, who went to Vietnam and still experience trauma in their life as a result of it. I was so fortunate to be in the situation I was in, I didn't have to go, you know. But, uh, you know, a tough time. 
right after I right when I got out of the service and got involved playing right away and one of the first people I met was Mike Clark, the drummer, you know, great drummer with the headhunters, you know, and Mike and I were in this band called the Reality Sandwich. And they used to play at a place called the On Broadway in uh, downtown Oakland on Jack London Square. And there was a lot of music in restaurants at that, that part of town and all this. And Mike was one of the first guys I met. And we sort of got fired in and out of that band. And, you know, that's where I met the guys in the Tower of Power. And then after that, Mike got the gig with, with Herbie. Mm 